Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for being here. Appreciate you watching the video. Today, we are in my 86 Mustang, and we are going to talk a little bit about auto-tuning and self-tuning ECUs, and how they do it, and what they're using to do it. Disclaimer, I'm by no means an expert. I've been doing some tuning and computer-ish stuff similar for probably the last 10 years, but there's always gonna be more to learn. So I'm gonna share with you what I know and what I do, and we'll go from there. So I'm getting my computer fired up right now. I have a, um, a standalone ECU from Stinger Performance, and I use, um, what is it called, Tuner Studio software to do my tuning with. And I will show you a little bit about that as well. But we're going to talk more so about the auto-tuning feature because when you get into tuning, tuning itself has a lot to it that most people don't, frankly, have the time to understand. So if you're just getting into, you know, some like, there's a lot of people using like the Holly EFI tuners and some other name brand stuff. My only gripe about those is that if you can't really change any parameters with, within the ECU, it's difficult to get as much power out of your car as you want. All right, guys, so this is the Tuner Studio software, and it's by EFI Analytics. And for any of you guys that are using, like, uh, I know there's the MS3, some of the big stuff. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of different ECUs that if it's micro squirt, it's typically going to use this software you can use this software um, if you go to efianalytics.com they actually had a listing um, if I remember right it's been a while since I was there but they've got a listing of uh, communication cables you can see they've, all, they've always got new stuff coming out they've got a Bluetooth or a wireless mega squirt uh, connector so you can connect to a tablet via Bluetooth or, or whatever or your computer so we're gonna open up a project here and we're gonna go a little bit through this. Let's connect my ECU. All right, so this is Tuner Studios, and you can change all these gauge clusters. That's a, another video for another time. But we're talking about the auto tune, and if you can see right here, there is an auto tune feature. So you can go to Tune Live, Tune for You. And this is your auto tune, and you can go over here and click the start button right over here and it will actually start auto-tuning for you. You can change your advanced settings so that you can, you know, like I have mine, so it doesn't adjust any of the idle settings, so it doesn't adjust under 1200 RPM because I like where my idles, I don't want it to change it. But you can adjust a lot of other, um, a lot of other things here. Your AFR targets, you can select which table it uses. So right here, we're on AFR table one. So you can go up to your fuel settings here and you can go AFR table one. So that's what it uses to adjust your, your fuel. So on your auto tuning ECUs, there's typically a lot of parameters that you will set up in it. So you'll tell it your engine size, your displacement, your injectors, you set all those parameters and then it will set a base AFR table map for you. Now you can also with EFI analytics, you can do a calibrate AFR table so you can go through and say okay here's my wideband settings 0 to 5 volts 10 to 20 is what mine is set at or you can select whatever they've got here and you can calibrate a base map now that's all this is is a base map and i guess that's my my one complaint at least from people that i've seen use some of the tuning software is that you set a, a base afr map right so you get your base air fuel ratio table or your map here and this is what it uses to auto-tune. So this table here, you can see you've got your AFR load in KPA, and then you've got your RPM here. So what it does is whatever RPM you're at, and whatever AFR load you're at, it will adjust the actual fuel that's given, or your VE percentage, so that it can attain this desired air-fuel ratio. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but 
This is your airflow ratio table. It's set by your engine parameters. And then when you're auto tuning, this is your VE table. So if you go to your fuel settings, you get your fuel VE table one. And you can see mine needs a lot of work. This is uh, a new uh, a new map for a new engine combo that I just got set up. So I haven't um, I haven't changed much. I just gave it some numbers so it would drive. So I'm going to go do a little bit of auto tuning myself here in the next couple of days and get my map more dialed in. But you can see I've got a lot of places where here we have a 96% and then there's an 89 right next to it. So those are kind of some bigger jumps that you want to avoid, especially up here. You can see we've got, we're going from 93, 93, 91, 88, and then 100. So that's a big jump there. Those are what you try to, to get out. If you don't drive in every RPM though, it's not going to adjust those. So we'll go back to our AFR table. Okay. So when you're self-tuning, you've got all these targets here. You can see that at 100% load, I want it to be at about a 12.5. And I can adjust these. I can drag, click, I can go up, down, I can smooth out the table. I can do a lot of things from here to make my transitions. You can see I go from like a 15.4 to a 14.5. So this is all of my cruising here and because of my cam, if I give it much more fuel than this, I get a lot of backfiring and popping through the exhaust because it's too rich. So I've got to run a little bit leaner, at least their fuel ratio, because there's a lot of unburnt uh, fuel that's come, going out the exhaust. My cam doesn't, uh, I think, what is it, 2500 to 6900 is my, my range. So from right about here, these are a little more accurate down in this low end range my my cam is so big that it's not you can see that at idle i've got it at a 19.5 so that i don't get all that fuel coming out the back end so that's the overview that's your you know your gist of what the auto tuning does and that's um all of your, your auto-tuning ECUs, anything that's like a self-learning, whatever they call it, that's what it's using. You give it a target air-fuel ratio, and you have to have a wideband O2 sensor hooked up, and it uses that signal from your wideband O2 sensor to dial in your VE, or your fuel percentage. So some of the other things to look for when you are trying to tune your car, that's my VE table, sorry, I was trying to go to my AFR table. So on, on a car with a bigger cam, you have to make sure that you look at your cam specs. And I know that mine's 2,500 to 6,900. Um, my cam is made more for higher RPM. So the low RPM, the idle and the, the cruising is a little, a little trickier on mine. So what you have to do is kind of use your ear, use your nose as far as getting your base idle set. So with mine, I gave it a number it would run at, and I started having a lot of popping and backfiring through the exhaust. So that's why I have my auto-tune feature set to not go below 1200 so that I could have I could adjust it myself and get it to where I, I knew it was supposed to be. And then I checked to see what my air-fuel ratio was, and that's how I came up with this number here. So when I was idling, if I gave it like 42 to 43, it was just black smoke out the exhaust. You could tell it was just, there was so much fuel it was making your, your eyes water. So I had to keep dialing it down and dialing it down until I finally got to a number right here where it would run, but I didn't have popping and backfiring out the exhaust from it being so rich. So with bigger cams, you'll have to do that. With smaller cams, it's a lot easier. You can, um, they've actually got a newer feature where you can do a warm up auto tune. It will adjust your warm-up enrichment for you so we'll actually adjust this warm-up enrichment that's that's another another thing for another day but this is for your actual drivability so once you get it warmed up once you get it you get it idling you can see you'll have to adjust some of these numbers by yourself and also when I was cruising I had to do the same thing because initially I had my AFR you can see back in my AFR table. So these, I had these, um, these, these guys over here in this table, I had that set probably around 14.7, 14.8 as far as cruising goes. And I had to up that quite substantially. So you can see I'm running a lot leaner right here when I'm cruising. So right around 15.8, 15.9 is when my popping and backfiring stopped at the exhaust. So I could tell I wasn't I wasn't having a rich backfire within the exhaust. So you'll have to do some adjustments like that if you've got a bigger cam. 
Now, like I said, if you got a normal cam, it's a lot easier and you can adjust these AFR targets or typically you can leave them very close to um, when you do your calibration on your table. What you, what you would like to do is get your car on a dyno, see where it's running, see how it's running, and you can start pulling some of these and get, you know, you can add fuel or take away fuel to get it in a more ideal range rather than just using the factory calibrated table. I guess it's not really a factory calibrated table, but a, a table that's calibrated based off of the engine parameters. Alright guys, that that's get. kind of a rundown of how your auto-tune features work and how the, the self-learning ECUs are working. Now there's always some room for human error in there, that's why you have to be really careful. If you put your engine settings um, into the ECU incorrectly, there's always a chance that you could hurt something, right? So like if you don't put your displacement in properly and that table doesn't get calibrated properly to your specs of your engine, there's some chances you could hurt things. That's why I prefer, you know, the, the EFI analytics or the tuner studios because there's a lot more, uh, it's very user friendly. There's a lot of uh, tech support out there and there's a lot of good help that you can get from it. So um, it's really good stuff. Uh, guys, if you like the video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, like, comment, uh, let me know. If you have any questions, if there's anything else I can answer for you, I'll do my best. Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.